So I have my associate Brian here. We are going to answer a question from a YouTube comment that I thought was pretty interesting and I really wanted his expertise, which is in the machining and inspection side of design and manufacturing. So the question is, if you have a counterbore feature called out as a datum feature, so in this case, a primary datum feature, I'll put a, a figure up on the screen here, how would you treat that at inspection? So uh, my first thought was you need to pick one or the other. You need to pick the through hole or you need to pick the counter bore to be able to simulate that at inspection. Whether you're using a mandrel or going in there with the CMM, uh, you've got to pick one or the other because the, the problem is when you put it on a drawing, they're on the same line. So when you put the datum on there, you're saying these two features form uh, datum. So I'll give it over to Brian to give his uh, explanation of what's going on. Right. So the question is, you know, is the counterbore of the hole doing the work is one of the first things I would ask, you know, if, if I have a question, what is what is more important? And a lot of times you can display for that based on the tolerancing. The counterbore is going to be loose, the hole is going to be tight or vice versa. And that is kind of a giveaway to what is really the datum and what is not. And somebody just tolerance on the drawing away, not realizing what they're doing. And uh, we had a conversation earlier about like if this was a countersunk hole, you know, the countersink technically is part of it. Even if it's not a datum, you still have to measure it as it's located to the hole. Right. And uh, let's be honest, people just don't do that. Um, especially if it's something like a deburring, a reason just to break an edge, it's not actually for a, a flathead machine screw. So, you know, it, it would be nice to see if, if one really mattered, if it was the counterbore doing the work and the, like, um, Cylinder heads sometimes have this where there's a counterbore that does locating and right. the, the stud goes through the cylinder head. Right. The counterbore is what matters. Everything else is clearance. The counterbore needs to be the datum. It should be separated as such. Right. Um, we shouldn't be guessing, you know, and as far as inspecting it, it's not a problem. Um, but, you know, what to fixture to what to the drawing is going to be critical. And the CMM, you know, gives you a lot of leeway as always um, on the surface plate. Um, you know, if we try to capture RFS, that can be can be tricky. Um, if you're trying to capture both features at the same time. Right, which, yeah, that would be custom gauging. There's right. no real way around it. Even to capture a blind feature at RFS can be tricky sometimes. Yeah. Um, you have to, you technically, you got to use expandable mandrels. Um, let's be honest, most people are not. Right. Um, they are, if they were bored on the same op on the CNC, if they were even circle milled on a good machine, um, they are going to be they're going to be treated as a you know a MMC type. I don't want to say it's not going to be RFS. Right. Um, they're going to treat it just like a, a fixed a fixed uh, fixed gauge. They're not going. They're going to put pins in it, right. or they're going to check the bores, which is still not right. But they are I, on average, it is rare to see somebody inspect a part with a expandable mandrel that's blind. Right. Um, they make them. They're out there. They're used for fixturing a lot, um, but I've never seen anybody actually inspect or fixture a counterbore that way. Right. They would have a CMM if they're that advanced. You can do it. They make custom fixtures for mass production to do so, but at the average job shop, I've never seen anybody go to that level on the plate. So if the if you did all the holes and counterbores in the same operation, yes. same fixturing everything, yep. You, it's just a wash. You're going to consider them to be on this coaxial. Yes. Uh, basically, if if this part is relatively thin, uh, under two inches, right. um, and not some sort of very difficult to machine material, it's going to be spot drilled, drilled, and then counterboard. And whether that's counterboard nowadays, it's going to be helix board or circle milled in. The counterboard is going to be the better of the two because it's circle milled. The drill can walk the variables. Um, even if you ream it, it the, drill, the ream is going to follow the drill. Um, you know, if you really need them in line, it's, it's bore and then circle mill or bore and bore. That's rare. If it's a regular bull hole pattern and it's on the CNC and it's programmed correctly, if your tolerance is like a 10,000 positional tolerance, you're going to get, that's what the machine's going to give you right. within reason. Um, people are going to check one, but after that, unless you require full inspection from your suppliers, that's what you're going to get. Because a lot of people can't get better than that. Yeah, that's what they got. The machine is, is positioning. So, you know, they're, it's, it's going to be as what it is. That's interesting. We were talking earlier about composite, and I know you don't want to get too yeah. into it, but if you do a pattern yep. in one op, yep. right, and take it off, that's basically the lower segment of your composite yes. position. You can consider that pattern to be good. Yes. 
the beauty of composite in CNC machining versus manual machining. Because in CNC machining, wherever, setting your work offset is up for debate on its accuracy. Edge finder versus the Hamer probe versus a test indicator with a gauge block versus the Renishaw probe. These are all, or a, you know, a, a pin with, with feeler gauge using the tool with paper. These are all different methods of, and degrees of accuracy to set your, from your machine home to the part zero. Right. That part zero should match your datum reference frame. Right. Okay, with, when possible. As, and sometimes you're creating it as you go in the machine, so whatever. But cr that second uh, feature control frame, that second portion of composite control is the easy part. That's all the programming and your machine in the backlash and it, it, arguably drilling versus boring right. versus etc. That's the easy part. That is usually pretty simple to check. It's from your original datum reference frame or from the edges or from the center lines to that pattern that becomes more difficult if you're not machining all the way around. Right. We talked about this in other videos. It, the more you do in one op, the, the more you can rely on the machine itself if it's a tight machine. But that's what the upper segment of a composite right. feature control frame gives you. It can be further away from your work offsets. Right, right. And that's a good, I guess that's a good way to explain composites too, especially a CNC machinist, because they're, this is gonna make sense. The pattern to itself is always, if the program right, is gonna be good. Right. Where it is on the block is all depending on how well you picked up and indicated your part in. That's more difficult. That's the that's the difference. So I guess that that should help a lot of people understand that control. And I would assume a good machinist with a nose or CNC machine knows the difference between those you know uh, methods you talked about. You know, say you have thirty thousandths, right. you could do it with a piece of paper. Sure. You have two thousandths, and you need to get a yeah. dial indicator, a thousandths yeah. indicator I mean, a lot in. Of, a lot of people, um, you know, the the, the edge finder is, is pretty standard, but the edge finder only repeats within a couple thousandths at best. Um, so that's going to be your rough adjust. A lot of times I use an edge finder if I am not, if I am machining everything away. If I have a piece of billet and I'm, and I'm machining everything away, it just tells it roughly where it is. It's not a big deal. You got room. You got 30 thou material all the way around. If I need to pick up an edge exactly within two thou, or you know, you might use a Hamer probe or the Renishaw probe. Um, if I have to pick up within within a thousandths or half a thousandths, then I'll probably still use the Hamer or the Renishaw to get me, you know, a rough number. And then I'll, use, I'll sweep a test indicator and flip it and sweep it against a gauge block and we could do something on that yeah. to pick it up with a tenth indicator exactly. And then I'll compare my numbers. I'm usually a few, maybe maybe eight tenths out. Okay. Um, it, and it's tough because if your machine's got, you know, slop in it, then you got problems. Right, it's all additive. Right. Okay. So, you know, picking up an edge, that's why a lot of parts aren't like that. Right. You know, and that's the beauty of CNC machining because you're doing so much in one op where on the bridge port and the mid, you don't even have that. You're comparing and setting this to that and all the time. The CNC, you do as much in one op as you can and it's as good, as, as, as long as your machining ops correspond, they're as good as you're gonna get it within re for average machine parts. Right. You know, when you're getting a tooling and, and sub 1,000 or even sub half thou tolerance and things change. Right, but yeah, a manual machine, you have to make it go, say you have a pattern of holes, you're manually making it go to each one of those right. so the, the opportunity for operator error yeah, exactly. is multiplied and then right. you got backlash and all that stuff there's a lot of variables of the manual machine um in general you know so a lot more skill there, i don't want to say a lot more skill involved there's like 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 dean said there's a lot more options to make mistakes where the cnc machine if it's programmed right and set up right it's a lot easier to, to give it to an operator and still have successful parts be made with a manual machine. You got to go to drill gauge, you know, fixturing where it, the part is bolted to it and then the drill guide guides it so the operator could go and run it very quickly. Otherwise, a skilled, the skilled machinist or setup has to sit there and do it themselves. And that's just not normal. And then you can incorporate that into inspection as well. After you do a full inspection of the first part off a CNC machine, you can go ahead and probably assume yeah. Every, yeah. Uh, the rest of the, you know, it's up to the inspection department, yeah. but you can go ahead and assume. Yeah. You can start getting into batch inspection where one out of every 10 or one out of 50 gets full inspection, things like that. And it becomes repeatable. Just you know, for the most part, the machines, um, if the machines are in good shape, they will repeat pretty well once you're dialed in. I guess what we talked about earlier is, is break out. If, if a counterbore has to be, the datum break it away right. from the hole pick the through hole or the counter bore right. make one of those the datum and I'll, I'll put a figure on the screen here as far as you know how you do that drafting wise oh and the other thing if you have a pattern and you want to make it a datum same thing applies you want to indicate on the drawing that 
all eight or whatever of the through holes or the datum or all eight of the counterbores of the datum, not all of them being, you know, the datum together. Right, you're right. And again, if somebody is proficient with ge geometric tolerancing, you're gonna get a more expensive workpiece. Right. Um, if they're not, who, you know, who yeah. knows what you're gonna get. Even if you put it, you know, you can say, oh, whatever, I'll put it on CMM, it'll figure it out. But if you have a machinist that normally doesn't care that much about counterbores, and maybe the counterbore has a larger tolerance, then that's gonna take away from the tolerance you have for everything else, because the, the CMM is gonna try to fit to both. So any coaxiality difference you have is gonna take away from the, the total tolerance available, right. uh, if that makes sense. Right. And even on the CMM, it, it, it changes the speed your contact, it changes your cookbook settings if you're running right. as ice. Right. You know, so, you know, a lot of times we don't run old school counterbores anymore into this, you know, where it, where it has a pilot. Right. Those counterboring tools assume it's for a sock head cap screw, right. which is a, all clearance. So if you have precision, one of these two is locating or for a reason needs a tighter, it is a datum, needs a tighter diameter tolerance, whatever it might be, even, a, even the depth could matter. Um, that needs to be separated out. Uh, and and, and even, if it's, even if it's not something you're accustomed to seeing, the clearer you make your design requirements, the more likely you are to get the part that works. Right, especially so, with datums. Exactly, yeah. No, yeah, you, yeah, once that falls, you're done. That's your foundation. Yeah, you got to have that. It, without, without, I mean, and I've said this in, in other in other videos, um, the datum system alone is is huge. Right. Without that, I mean, you could almost eliminate all the variables in, in the fourteen point five, yeah. and still the datum system it'd still be better than coordinate tolerancing. Datum's in position. Yep. That's like ninety five percent of what people Absolutely. are out there inspecting and using. Absolutely. Yep. So yeah, they got to be right because then again, the machinist is creating them as they go. So they, you know, and they're going to machine and change the ops. The tighter the tolerance, or the more you're trying to get into one, the more expensive it's going to be. Right. You know, in theory. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's any kind of custom inspection tooling is, and then you know, time with the CMM, it all just costs money. Exactly. When a simple drafting change can eliminate right. all of that. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. So that's it for uh, this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out my channel. I'll put uh, Brian's channel in the description. He does a lot more of the CMM and CMM. If you want to learn how to program and master cam, uh, he can help you out with that. And uh, we'll see you next time.